Hello everyone, and welcome back to History Lens. Today we're diving into one of the most intriguing and often disturbing chapters in history. What happened to the Nazis after World War II? This topic has fascinated historians and curious minds for decades, and shows that even the darkest villains can't escape the long arm of the law. In this video, we'll explore the fate of some of the most notorious figures from the Nazi regime, the Nuremberg Trials, the post-war Nazi organizations, and the lasting impact of Nazism on the world. Before we begin, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below and give the video a thumbs up if you love this content. That being said, let's get started. After the defeat of Nazi Germany in 1945, the Allied powers, including the United States, the United Kingdom, the Soviet Union, and France, came together to hold the Nuremberg Trials. These trials were a series of military tribunals aimed at prosecuting prominent Nazi leaders for their roles in war crimes, crimes against humanity, and the overall devastation of World War II. The Nuremberg Trials were an unprecedented international effort to hold individuals accountable for their actions during wartime. These trials sought to answer crucial questions. Could the leaders of a defeated nation be held responsible for their aggressive actions and the atrocities committed by their regime? Could the defense of just following orders absolve individuals of their involvement in heinous crimes? The most notable of these trials was the first Nuremberg trial, often referred to as the Trial of the Major War Criminals. It began in November 1945 and included 24 high-ranking Nazi officials who were chosen for their roles in key aspects of Nazi aggression, atrocities, and aggression. Among the accused were figures like Hermann Göring, Rudolf Hess, and Joachim von Ribbentrop. The Nuremberg Trials were a groundbreaking moment in the history of international law and justice. They sought to establish the principles that individuals, regardless of their positions within a government, could be held accountable for their actions during wartime. The Nuremberg Trials demonstrated that just following orders was not a valid defense for war crimes and crimes against humanity. Many of these defendants were found guilty of crimes, ranging from planning and initiating wars of aggression to genocide. Several were sentenced to death, while others received lengthy prison terms. Hermann Göring, one of Hitler's closest associates, notably escaped the death penalty by committing suicide the night before his execution, avoiding facing justice for his role in the Nazi regime. The Nuremberg Trials set a precedent for international justice and established the foundation for subsequent trials and the development of modern international law. The principles established at Nuremberg continued to influence how the world responds to acts of aggression, war crimes, and crimes against humanity. The Nuremberg Trials also contributed to the creation of international organizations, like the United Nations, which were designed to prevent future conflicts and promote global cooperation. The trials served as a reminder that the world could not allow such atrocities to occur again, and that accountability and justice were paramount in shaping a more peaceful and just world. In the end, the Nuremberg trials demonstrated that even the most powerful individuals could be held accountable for their actions, helping to bring a measure of closure and justice to the millions who suffered as a result of Nazi aggression and brutality during World War II. So let's get started. While the Nuremberg Trials focused on the major Nazi leaders, there were many lower-ranking Nazi officials and collaborators who managed to evade capture and justice. The hunt for Nazi war criminals continued long after the trials concluded. The most famous of these Nazi fugitives was Adolf Eichmann, a key figure in the implementation of the Holocaust. Eichmann managed to run away to Argentina, where he lived under a fake identity. For years, he escaped justice, but his past eventually caught up with him. In 1960, Israeli agents led by Mossad found and arrested Adolf Eichmann in Buenos Aires. He was secretly taken to Israel to face trial for his part in the Holocaust. Eichmann's trial was a globally important event that revealed the horrors of the Holocaust and allowed survivors to share their experiences. Eichmann was found guilty of crimes against humanity, war crimes, and crimes against the Jewish people. He was given the death penalty and executed in 1962. His capture and trial showed that Nazi war criminals could not escape justice, regardless of how long they hid. Another notable cause was that of Joseph Mengele, 
infamously known as the Angel of Death for his gruesome medical experiments on concentration camp inmates. Mengele, after the war, managed to live in hiding in South America for years, mainly in Argentina and later in Paraguay and Brazil. Despite efforts to locate him, Joseph Mengele remained elusive. He lived under various aliases and avoided capture for decades. However, in 1979, Mengele drowned in Brazil while swimming and was buried under a false name. The pursuit of Nazi war criminals continued throughout the post-war years. The dedicated work of individuals, organizations, and governments led to the capture and prosecution of many others who had played roles in the Nazi regime's wicked actions. It's important to note that not all Nazi war criminals faced justice. Some managed to escape capture or die before they could be brought to trial. The search for these individuals shows how challenging it can be to find and hold accountable those responsible for terrible actions during wartime. The efforts to find and punish Nazi war criminals served as a reminder that the global community was determined to ensure that the perpetrators of the Holocaust and other war crimes wouldn't get away with their actions. These actions reinforced the message that individuals who commit such terrible acts would be held responsible no matter where they hid or how much time had passed. After World War II, the defeat of Nazi Germany did not completely eradicate the remnants of the Nazi ideology or the individuals associated with it. Some former Nazis sought to regroup and continue their extremist beliefs, while others went into hiding or found refuge in sympathetic countries. One of the organizations that gained notoriety in post-war years was the Odessa, organization of former SS members. Odessa was rumored to have been involved in helping SS officers and other Nazi officials escape to South America and the Middle East. While the extent of Odessa's activities remains a subject of debate, it has been the subject of various conspiracy theories and novels. It is important to note that while Odessa may have played a role in facilitating the escape of some Nazi war criminals, the organization's overall influence and impact have been widely disputed among historians. The extent to which it functioned as a coordinated and effective network remains a topic of ongoing research and debate. Additionally, some former Nazis found refuge in countries sympathetic to their cause. Argentina, under the leadership of Juan Domingo Perón, became a haven for Nazi fugitives in the post-war years. Adolf Eichmann, Joseph Mengele, and other prominent Nazis found sanctuary in Argentina. It was a destination of choice due to its lax immigration policies and the presence of sympathetic communities. Other countries, such as Syria and Egypt, also reportedly provided safe havens for former Nazis, intelligence officers, and scientists. These countries saw the potential value in harnessing the knowledge and expertise of former Nazi officials for their own purposes, such as military and intelligence endeavors. However, it is crucial to emphasize that not all former Nazis continued to promote their ideologies or sought refuge in foreign countries. Many Germans confronted the horrors of the Nazi era and worked diligently to rebuild their country and society. The process of denazification aimed at purging Nazi influences from German institutions and culture played a significant role in this transformation. The post-war years saw a complex interplay of efforts to bring Nazis to justice, the escape and refuge of some individuals, and the broader process of rebuilding Germany and Europe in the aftermath of World War II. The Nazis' actions during World War II have left a deep mark on the world. The Holocaust, where six million Jews and millions of others were killed, is one of the worst things that ever happened. The Nuremberg trials and the hunt for Nazi criminals were big deals. They showed that no matter who you are, even if you work for a government, you can't get away with doing bad things during a war. The Nuremberg trials also helped make rules about how the world should act in times of war. They started the idea of human rights and making sure people are treated fairly. We still talk about the Holocaust today to make sure we never let something so terrible happen again. Museums and special days remind us what happened and why it's crucial to stand up against hate. The lessons from the Nuremberg trials and the pursuit of Nazi criminals continue to guide us in our fight for fairness, justice, and human rights in today's world.